Boats are built like bathtubs, but did you know locks and canals are too? Stick around to find out more. Hi, I'm Sean from Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. And today we're actually doing something a little different. We often help you uh, know how to buy and, and look for things about buying boats. But today we're actually going boating. So one of the unique things we have in our area is a canal system. We're on a large lake in Eastern Ontario and it's part of a canal that was built uh, in 1832. It was actually built uh, when uh, Canada wasn't even a country yet. In a lot of areas around the world, there are canals that join lakes and rivers. There are lots in Northern US, there's tons in Europe, and uh, there's probably all kinds that I've never heard about. So we're going to go through a lock today and show you what it's all about because people get really get nervous when they go through a lock. It's essentially docking in an enclosed space with a lot of people watching. So stay tuned on today's video, we're going to show you how you enter a lock any locking etiquette that you may want and how you safely feel like you transverse through. Stick around to the end of this video when I give you a very brief, maybe boring, history lesson of why the Rideau Canal was constructed and how it happened. If you like today's video, make sure you throttle that like button, subscribe to get on board for more of these type of videos. So what you're looking at right now is what's called the blue line. On the Rideau Canal, that's where you would dock temporarily while you waited to enter the lock. When the lock staff sees you tied to that blue line, they know that you're waiting to enter the lock. This is what's called a slack water lock system. And how it works is that the body of water that is above the lower body of water will fill the lock just like a bathtub fills. And that will raise the boats to the level of the upper lake or canal and allow you to open the gates on the far side and drive through. And then when we go down, the reverse happens. You enter from the lock side on the upper side of the lake. They close the doors, lower the water out into the lower body of water. And once it's the same level as that body, the doors pressure releases and you can open them and exit the lock. So let's talk about locking etiquette. What you want to make sure is that you go into the lock completely prepared. The best advice I can give you is to keep your options open. And what that means is that you want to have lines and fenders set on both sides. You may prefer to pull along the lock wall on the right or starboard side. And oftentimes the lock master will need you to pull along the left or port side, or they may even ask you to come up the middle and tie on to another boat that's in the lock or they might ask you to tie along the wall and then accept another boat that ties alongside you. So having your fenders and lines out and ready on both sides will allow you to quickly and efficiently prep yourself for getting into the lock. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have your lock pass visible for the lock masters. And if you don't have a lock pass, you're gonna to wanna to have your payment ready and be able to tell them how long your boat is so that they can quickly and efficiently get you on your way and get you a day pass or however long you're gonna be on the system. And you've tied up and secured. Make sure you don't tie the boat too tightly. You're gonna to wanna to leave enough slack so the boat can move around a bit. And as the water in the lock either raises or lowers, you're going to want to make sure that the lines don't bind up on any of the cleats or attaching lines that go down the lock wall. Turn off your engine and most locks in the world have a sign to keep your blower on if your boat is an inboard outboard. After the lock has either raised or lowered, watch for the lock master to give directions on who goes first. Don't start the boat immediately and try to get out of the lock. Make sure that they've given you all the clear and they usually give you an exact order of how they want the boats to exit the lock. And now for a very brief and boring history lesson on the Rideau Canal. Back in 1812, when the US and Britain were at war, Canada was not a completely independent country. They were a British colony and in order to defend themselves against US invasion, which happened in 1812, they decided to build a military canal of strategic importance to be able to ferry and get supplies from the then capital Kingston, Ontario, which is on Lake Ontario, to Ottawa, or at, at that time Bytown, which was the industrial capital of Canada. 
That's where all the lumber was, personnel, all the things they needed in order to make supplies to defend against the country. So they built this canal between Kingston and Ottawa in order to, to get supplies to Kingston without having to go down the St. Lawrence River, which is how they did in the past, but that is the border to the US. So in order to keep themselves protected, they decided to build this canal. And it was extremely hard to do. In today's time, I can't even imagine how they got this canal built in the record amount of time. By 1832, this canal was fully operational. So that's why the canal was built. And then, of course, we never went back to war with the US. So it was then turned into a commercial venture where we supplied small towns and villages and ferried people uh, who were emigrating to the area and building up the population in these small villages and eventually it became a tourist destination and part of our cultural heritage here in Canada. I hope you enjoyed the trip through the Rideau Canal today and the lock at Narrows Lock. You may never have the opportunity to go through a lock like this, but if you do, take it because it's really interesting to see how the engineering works, particularly in an old system like this. If you are nervous about docking and maneuvering your boat, check out this video here on some boat docking tips. Many people are intimidated by driving a boat through a lock, but if you just take your time, listen to what the Lockmaster says, it'll go completely smoothly. Thanks for joining us on today's Lens Cove Lessons in Boating. Make sure you subscribe to get on board for more of these type of videos. If you like today's video, make sure you throttle that like button, get out on the water, have fun, and stay safe.